first step will be to determine which one of the pneumatic connections located here and here uh, causes the valve to open and which one causes the valve to close. How we determine that is by applying air to each one and monitoring which way the valve goes when we apply the uh, pneumatic connection. Also what we want to note is which way the actuator rotates when going from fully closed to fully open. Here I have a piece of polyflow tubing uh, with approximately 20 pounds of air pressure on it. What I will do is I will apply it to one of the pneumatic connections and note the movement of the valve. As you could plainly see, applying air to this connection causes the valve to rotate open. When I apply air to the other side, the valve closes. We also note that when we go from the fully closed to fully open position, our actuator, when viewing from the top, rotates counterclockwise. Now that I know which ports open and close the valve, I will attach some temporary stickers labeled O and C so that when I attach the positioner, I know where to connect my output lines. This is a typical SRD 991 valve positioner. You'll notice that it has an LCD display, three push buttons, for configuration and calibration and terminals for the 4 to 20 input connections. Before attaching the positioner to the actuator, uh, verify that indeed it is a double acting actuator. How we do that is by looking at the data plate and making sure that the first character after the dash in the model code is a letter C. For example, SRD991-C. C indicates double acting. If it were a letter B, as in Baker, it would be a single acting and would not be applicable for a double ap acting application. The next and most important thing that we want to make note of is the flat spot on the feedback shaft and the raised arrow on the housing. When the actuator is at 50% open, the flat spot on the shaft should be aligned with the arrow. The positioner will only operate 45 degrees to either side of this location, which means a valid input position is 45 degrees before and 45 degrees after the arrow. Anything beyond that, for example, 180 degrees out, is an invalid position and will result in an auto start error uh, when you try to calibrate the positioner. Step would be to have a look at our rotary coupling, which allows us to attach the positioner to the actuator. This provides feedback between the two or a physical connection. Uh, you'll notice one side of the coupling has the letter R with a threaded hole next to it and the other side has the letter L with a threaded hole next to it. Uh, in a clockwise rotation you would put your set screw in the hole labeled R which is right hand mount, uh, right hand rotation I should say and in a counterclockwise or left hand rotation which is what we have, our set screw would be put, be put into the hole uh, next to the letter L. With our set screw in the hole labeled L, we put the coupling onto the feedback shaft with the set screw aligned with the flat spot on the shaft and we tighten it down with an Allen wrench. Once the set screw has been tightened down, what we want to do is we want to rotate the coupling so that the arrow that is 
marked on the coupling is aligned with the arrow on the housing of the positioner. This is our 0% or fully closed point on the valve. Once the coupling has been tightened down, we can then drop our positioner onto the actuator, making sure that the coupling falls into the slot on top of the actuator shaft right here. At this point, we can tighten down the positioner to the mounting bracket using our attachment screws. Once all of the mounting screws have been completely tightened and the positioner is fully secured to the mounting bracket, we can then uh, attach the pneumatic connections. Uh, on the side of the positioner, you will see three pneumatic connections labeled Roman numeral one with an arrow pointing out, Roman numeral two with an arrow pointing out, and just an arrow pointing in. The middle connection with the arrow pointing in is your supply air. Roman numeral one is output number one, and Roman numeral two is output number two. Our next step is to connect our two outputs. We want to put a connection into output one and make sure that that is connected to the port on the actuator that causes the valve to open when it is pressurized. So output one connects to the open port. Output number two will be connected to the port on the actuator that causes the valve to close when it is pressurized. And finally, the middle port is supply air. Supply pressure can be anywhere from 20 to 90 PSI, depending on the requirements of the actuator. Uh, once connection of the uh, pneumatics is complete, we can then connect our 4 to 20 milliamp input signal. You notice that there are multiple terminals on the positioner. The 4 to 20 milliamp connection is connected to terminals labeled 11 and 12. Terminal 11 being positive and terminal 12 being negative. Uh, once the uh, terminations have been, have been made on uh, terminals 11 and 12, at this point we can turn on our supply air. and we can turn on our 4 to 20 milliamp signal. We should now see the LCD display uh, illuminated. Uh, once the device is powered up, uh, the initial screen prompts us to select the language, either English German or French, we're going to select English. To accept this, press the up and down arrow simultaneously, and the next screen will display LCD orientation, either normal or flipped. Uh, due to the mounting configuration, we're going to press the up arrow or up button to uh, select flipped. Press up and down simultaneously to accept and the main menu appears. The first thing we want to do is select our mounting configuration. We'll press the up and down simultaneously to enter the mounting parameter. And you will see there are four selections, stroke left or stroke right, which are for linear valves or rotary counterclockwise and rotary clockwise. 
as we saw in the opening scene, this is a clockwise, uh, counterclockwise rotation actuator. So we're going to select rotary counterclockwise. And then we're going to down button to our valve action. When valve action is highlighted, select the up and down buttons. And we're going to select SRD, menu 3.1. And we're going to pick direct acting. So as our 4 to 20 milliamp input increases, our valve position will increase from 0 to 100%. So select up and down. Hit the menu button, go to auto start, press the up and down buttons together to enter the auto start menu, and select standard auto start. So press the up and down, and the positioner is now calibrating itself. It will go through four steps. You'll see the LEDs count down from one to four if your device is equipped with LEDs. Typically, this takes approximately five to 15 minutes, depending on the size of the actuator. Uh, and the positioner is now ready to put in service.